One of my least favorite aspects of any program is the way they handle brushes, customizing brushes. They always tell you how great and easy to use it is. Something in my brain rebels against the way these things have been implemented in every piece of software. I absolutely detest the way they all do it. So, um, including especially Adobe, I just, uh, my brain just doesn't see it. So anyway, I've worked very hard to get um, my custom brushes in uh, Adobe Photoshop. And uh, then I wanted to bring them into uh, Krita and a bit of an operation, but you know, quite doable, but you got to set aside a few hours for the tweaking. Uh, so I'm going to put my brush tools in the notes below links to them. So if you want to either use my Photoshop brushes in Photoshop, or if you want to then uh, bring in the, my Krita brushes as well, uh, I've done that. So I'm not going to delve into the Photoshop end of it. And there's also a, a YouTube movie that I'm going to link to below where uh, the YouTuber does a much better job of explaining very concisely uh, how the brushes are put together in credit through bundles. So uh, in effect, uh, here are the ABR files. To, I've got a couple of them here. And uh, Krita works with a, a bundle so you can create various clusters of different assets and resources. Again, my brain starts to melt at this point. So um, let me just bring you into here and show you what mine look like. Because if you do want to follow along with future courses that I do, maybe you want to try to match my brushes uh, to some degree. So uh, basically you have, when you come into the program, you have the uh, brush presets panel. Let me see if I can make it a bit bigger here. And you can make it a thumbnail or you can make it an icon. So let's go thumbnails. And at this point too, it's kind of overwhelming because there's just so many of them. Uh, it's one of those things where you go, ah, um, Corel paints like this too. There's so many brushes, you kind of have to spend quite a bit of time and be very ruthless. Like if you don't like a brush, if there's a way to delete it or move it or sequester it, or you know, if the program allows you to make your own groups. So luckily uh, this program does. So I made my own uh, tag group or tab group called Sketcher. And that's where I put all of my custom brushes that I was going to use purely for animation and cartoon design, that kind of thing. So let me go and see if we can make a new, so you can make a new tag. If I wanted to make a new tag, I could do that here and I could assign each individual brush by right clicking on it and assign that to a different tag. And then I can move that brush into that tag. So if you have two different styles of artwork, maybe you want to do painterly stuff with, with really natural brushes. Or like me, you want slightly tighter brushes that simulate like a, an old style pencil or a pen or a marker. You can do that. So um, you can customize them by coming up here to the brush preset tool. Let's see if it'll let me do it now. What's going on? Oh yeah, I have to select the brush in the uh, panel here. Brush preset tool. And in here you can customize the entire thing. And again, I'm not going to go into the brush customization here in any great detail. But uh, things like scatter will allow you to you know, make the brush a bit bigger. You know, you can then switch that on and off. So you can affect different aspects of the brush, uh, including the tip. You can make totally new ones. You can save the preset or overwrite the brush preset might be dangerous because you might you know, squash an existing brush that's important. So you, you know, it, I would favor saving a new brush preset so that you don't damage anything. And, and then just spend, like I did, like a good chunk of time basically just drawing with each one, trying to figure out uh, what was best until I finally got my own customs, which, and again, brutal, because one thing I found when I had a tab full of 20, I kept forgetting which one I was on. It's even with the, the name, when you go back here and make it uh, details, it's still easy to forget. So I had to rename everything and backwards and forwards. And there's a couple of days into that. So Again, you might not need to go into that much trouble if you find a brush you really like. But essentially, just to walk you through the kind of brushes I have in this is the uh, hard brush. Let me go back into the, make sure we're in black. Oh, that's the arrays, hard arrays, soft arrays. Uh, I call this one hair, because it's just like whiskers or you know, give them a mustache or whatever. Uh, a hard brush, because sometimes you just want to paint with the, a hard fill. Uh, a rough one, I like this rough one because it's kind of got built in like a, sort of transparency, so it builds up over time. Uh, the shaggy brush, which I brought in from Photoshop, behaves slightly differently. It's not as sensitive as in Photoshop, which is a little bit disappointing. I'm still struggling with this one to try to finesse it a little bit. 
um, where if I go a bit lighter, you see it's it's lighter but not smaller. So uh, there may be ways to mess with that. Uh, we have another sketchy brush here, which is very similar to this one. So I'll probably end up deleting that. Uh, we have a soft brush here, very important uh, texture line. Let me uh, delete these. Not much of a texture on it, it's, it's very slight. Uh, we have a tight cleanup line, which is nice. So if I do want to do something with a more finished look to it, then this would be the brush I would probably end up using for that. And also another kind of cleanup brush as well. So this would give you like a more a vector line kind of effect. The more uh, graphical look. So I reckon with this small set, that I'd be pretty good to you know, use that as a core. And if I need something after that, then I can always make another custom or bring in, build, bring in a new brush or whatever. But just to begin with, to be getting on with, this is fine. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, be patient with the brushes. Probably won't get them exactly right, you know, overnight. Um, and I found myself getting used to the credit brushes as I began drawing with them. Because it's again, it's sort of like a not quite muscle memory exactly, but you're you're so used to Photoshop brushes. If you've used it like I have for twenty years, you really get used to this this line producing this look. There is one other thing though I would like to show you about brushes, which is kind of something I don't recall too much in Photoshop. So if we have a brush tool here, let's make it big. Uh, we have brush smoothing, so we have none. We have basic. See, it's making a slight gap there, but I think that's my monitor really. Oh, no, it's uh, something odd. Uh, we have weighted. And we have stabilizer. Ooh. And now look at the lag. So stabilizer, I think, if you're okay with the lag um, and you want to draw like something very... Calligraphic is the word I'm struggling to find, and that might be a better way of doing it because I think it would be a lot harder to do that with none. Let's see if I can. Maybe I can. Ah, look at that! It's making bumps. So as you can see here, the original one definitely smoother. That's kind of handy. So I can see case uses for that very definitely. Just be patient with the lag. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else off the top of my head, but really this movie was to focus just on the brush heads and how you customize brushes. Again, if I find any more um, other movies, I'll link to them in the notes below because I don't want to get too deep into it. If somebody else has already done this content anyway, but this is the stuff that I want anyone that's going to be following along these future movies to be able to, to at least go What's he talking about? Oh yeah, that. Yeah, okay, that's it. And uh, next movie, more annoyances that we need to solve.